What's up everybody? Russ Grease here with rwgresearch.com and I have here Alex Petty. Hi everybody. This is Alex Petty, my good friend and researcher, colleague from many years now and me and him uh, we have been uh, working on Stanley Myers research for quite a long time. So now we're currently going to be working on sharing with you a very interesting uh, thought that we have come together and realized um, through lots of open source discussion. So what are we going to talk about exactly, Alex? Well, Russ, um, <laughs> as you know, we've decided um, that you can't get this done you know, isolated, <laughs> on isolated labs. And uh, so we're going to be sharing the kind of highest you know, state of knowledge that you, that you and I have, uh, you know, at least between us and uh, with a group of researchers too on your on your open research forum and, and also on, on my Yahoo groups and, and kind of you know condensing all that information down into one um, video slash blog post um, and the idea is that it'll help um, fuel other people's thinking and, and that you know we can in that way maybe get closer to the goal as an, as an open uh, source research community. Exactly and so currently this is our uh our working theory of operation and it's totally open for change. We love to hear everyone's feedback. Tell us what you think is right, what you think is wrong, if you agree on anything. Um, that'd be great. You can post that over at the forums or the Yahoo group which will be linked in the description of this video. Okay, operating Myers VIC. Alright Alex, tell me, uh, tell us all about exactly what, what we're going through here. Right, so this represents the um a current sort of state of understanding about Myers Vick. Um, and uh, let's, let's jump past some of the stuff at the top here since it's pretty, that's pretty generic information. But as we get down here towards um, these drawings of the, of the Vick, um, what, we've, what we've kind of realized is some of the effects of the Vick um, are, are, can, better, can be better understood if if we if we think about it just in a slightly different way, um, and so if you if you scroll down to the the schematic um, that has uh, that has the Vic with um, coupled between um, you know, two transformers, the primary and L2 and L1 and the secondary, um, this is this is essentially an equivalent circuit to the standard drawing. Um, it's just that the uh, you know the transformers; these these two coupled coils are are different from how it's generally you know usually represented um, in the standard drawing. But it but this difference uh, makes you know a significant um, it, it significantly accounts for many of the effects that are described in Meyer's documents, like his um, you know the WFC um, brief, which is a collection of memos. Uh, particularly um, chapter seven, which is very instructive, um, and also uh, his his patents, a couple of his patents, um, which which are there's, there's two patents in particular, which are, which go right right to the point of, of of Myers technology, and while they might be a little verbose, they really do describe exactly what it is you know that he is claiming that the Vic does. So this this drawing makes a lot of what he describes in those technical documents more understandable. So let's let, so let's see exactly what I mean then about about how this arrangement of the schematic, uh, though it's equivalent, if you if you trace all the components, you'll see that everything's still connected the same way. Um, but just by putting those by grouping pri the primary L two on one core and and L one and the secondary on another core, um, you know you, you get uh, you get some effects which better map to the to the technical writings of Stan Meyer. So let's see specifically what I mean about that. Um, if you look here. At um, you know, starting from the beginning, you got a low voltage um, series of pulses. That's, that's this illustration here, gated unipolar pulse train, um, and and you see there's there's three kind of you know major uh, divisions of this drawing. One is T1, which which will mean to say uh, the time that the pulse is on, that the you know the resonant pulse is on. Um, the T2, which is uh, the time that it's off. And then there's you know there's a succession of, of T1 T2 T1 T2, uh, and then you come to a gating period during which the re the resonant pulsing is, is is off, and that's called T3. This is by the way Meyer's notation, so we're just you know we're just using 
without every, the Myers, Myers notation. Yeah, every, now, everything is pretty much, well, everything came out of Myers uh, notations here as, as far as the, uh, the drawings that you're seeing. The illustrations are something we derived through the, the group uh, research, but as far as the illustrations, the black and white illustrations are all directly from Myers. That's right. The, um, okay, so the, uh, so when we apply th this voltage, these, these low voltage um, square waves to the gate of a MOSFET or other switching device, MOSFETs are best, um, the, um, and we allow power to pulse through the primary coil, um, you see on the secondary side, um, you see this next drawing, this transformer action, which is a series of a series of pulses um, on that on that um, on the second, you know, on on the L on L two uh, on the L two coil of that first transformer. Now, if you look, okay, so here's where things start to depart from um, kind of the order what you can readily see just by slapping a circuit together and putting some scope probes on it. There is a condition that can be reached um, in which certain aspects of this circuit are, are balanced and um, where, where various, you know, where impedance is balanced, where resonance is peaked, all these kinds of things. Um, and, and that's when you get this, this inductive coupling um, effect. And all that means is, you know, by the, the, the coils are all, are all joined in operation by, um, by the magnetic flux that flows, um, the flu that, that they share, that flows sort of between them. And, and and in this way, in that sort of that inductive coupling, you get this uh, each time during T1, you have you have these energized coils, and during T2, you have a collapse of the of those magnetic fields, and those and those and that collapse um, leads to this this additional peak during T2. So while the energization on the primary is off, the circuit itself produces this sort of echo pulse. Through, because of the back EMF, um, because of the you know because of the collapsing coils, and so you get this inductive and this inductive what he calls inductive coupling here uh, of, effect, and and so now you've got these pulses you know steady just steady pulses moving um, hitting the hitting the capacitor coming from you know different directions essentially, and um, but it's but they're all, but they're all uh, but they're but they're all um, the same polarity. So and that that's by virtue of the the uh, you know the way the vic is arranged, um, so then what we see the, what the capacitor feels that's this next this next drawing is the electrical step charging effect. Each time the energy hits uh, hit, hits it, it's always going, uh, and because the the vic prevents the um, cell from relaxing from discharging, you get these increased amplitudes stored in the in the cell each time. So again, example of Myers notation this VO through VN. So these are the different voltage points, um, these different, you know, arbitrary points of voltage at which s certain other effects begin to begin to happen in the in the in the voltage intensifier circuit. And we're going to talk through, um, you know, how we're going to talk through each of those phases and, and kind of the important changes that happen um, to to change the way that the VIC works as the voltages get higher. What well, um, Meyer called that the you know change in the mode of operation. So, um, and, and, and you can see in this next plate kind of what I'm saying here, you know, as you start off at V0, it's basically off, nothing happening. But then as you start pulsing it and you, and you approach v, VA, and you, as you, actually as you approach, start to approach VB, that's when you, you've had a few pulses, the, um, you've had some time to tune, to tune the frequency down to, to really hit, you know, both resonance and also um, this impedance match condition. And, and that's when this, and, and at that point, uh, is when you hit this amp inhibiting process, and Myers notes that with this this impedance equivalence equation here, you know, um, and, and he says ba basically that that little you know z, which is impedance, is equal to these various resistances and impedances throughout the circuit. So if R1 uh, being the impedance, like the resistivity of of the, uh, the, the of, of L2, Z2 and Z3 being the um, you know the impedance of the um, of L1 and the secondary, and RB, RE actually being the um, the, the resistance uh, in ohms of the water across the um, across the uh, you know between the plates. So, so, so when you it's, create, 
It's important too to note that uh, at resonance, these values are purely resistive. So you should be able to take the base resistance value that you measure of each one of these components and at resonance, they will be exactly added in this fashion to give you the impedance of the total network. Right, because at resonance, the capacitive and reactive, the, the capacitive reactants and the inductive reactances are equal, which means they can be factored out uh, to, to your point, Russ. That is a good point. So, um, so yes, um, and so then as, as now, now at this point, this amp inhibiting process begins, um, and the mode of operation of the VIC has changed, and now you get to VB, and, and you've got the circuit operating in this sort of other way, and this other mode of operation is all about just ma managing that, um, you know, making sure that, that energy is always holding, um, the energy flows through the circuit in such a way as to always hold the voltage on that positive plate of the capacitor, not allowing the capacitor to, to discharge and, and continuously being hit by more voltage, and, and in this way it just kind of keeps, you know, building pressure and, and pressure and pressure. And, and as an effect, as you approach VN, that's when, um, and, and again, this is actually illustrated in this next series of, of plates, which, which are taken from Stan's documents. Um, yeah, he just sort of walks you through the VA, VB, VC, and as you can see, the water molecule begins to feel more and more stress until finally at this VN point, it's, it's been the, the force of the electrostatic field is sufficient to break um, the oxygen and, and hide the bond between oxygen and hydrogen, and now you've got uh, the, you know, the derivation of gas from, from the water capacitor. So now it's acting like a fuel cell. Um, so that's uh, kind of the brief, the brief overview. Um, the next thing we want to do is, is, kind of, is take a look at the actual um, you know, passage of charge through the circuit. And, and so right now, what we've done in this, in this post is, is we've uh, illustrated from V0 to VA. Right? We're still working on what happens exactly on, uh, you know, from V, kind of the VA and a half, sort of VB on, because, the, because the really, the, the, as we're going to get into here in a moment, the flow of charge really changes completely. It, 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 um, and and there's some, there's some, there are still some things that happen after that point that we're still experimenting to try to make sure that we, that we have it right. But this first step, this first series, uh, at least insofar as you know, um, these this multiple coil arrangement um, it, it is is concerned. This is how the energy is indeed flowing through the circuit to, to the initial portion of the VIC. So go ahead and walk through that. Um, so as you can see, the first thing that happens is energy surges um, from ground. It's heading towards uh, to the battery there, and it's heading towards the primary. Um, the next thing that happens is the primary is energized um, and a uh, induced voltage occurs on L2, um, and that also produces a a, flu a, a flux field um, that you know in, 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 oriented in the direction that you see. So north of that flux field is is uh, top, is the positive side of that of that primary coil, um, and then it, it circulates in this way, um, just you know as per the normal direction of the magnetic field. Um, and the next step is that. The energy, the induced charge on L2 moves to the cathode of, of the water capacitor. Um, the next thing that happens is that the water capacitor anode responds, um, you know, begins charging in, in a manner consistent with you know the nature of capacitors, um, and it uh, you know, so it takes on an equal opposite charge. And and then um, while it's charging, you get this this you know this displacement current moving across, um, and that current. Uh, hits L1, um, and again, this is all happening very, very quickly, you know, in, in a matter of tens of thousands of a second. Um, and it's uh, so we get a, we get a charge in um, L1. Now that that creates uh, another um, flow of flux in as that as that magnetic field is created there in L1, and uh, begins to circulate in this other core. And you can see um, you can see how the flow of these two cores. Um, you know, how, how those interact with each other. Um, the next thing we see is that the charge fr um, from L1 continues where, to the diode where it is blocked by the quote blocking diode or switching diode 
Um, and at the same time, a, a flow, um, an induced charge occurs on the secondary. Um, and that induced charge begins to flow towards the other side of the diode. So, so that's where the diode acts like a switching diode because it will actually allow that positively, uh, that positive uh, electric, um, electric charge to move um, through it, you know. And, and so that's what we see in the next step. So right now, at this point, we've got like, a, you know, the, the VIC is, 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 is fully energized. Um, and it's about to do the interesting things that it does um, when, it, when the pulse is turned off. Um, and, it, and that is, when the pulse is turned off, that's when the VIC really functions to hold the charge on the capacitor, and it does so in the following ways. It, for one, it, the, um, the, um, the, the collapse, all, the, all the coils collapse. L1 collapses and drives a positively um, charged um, positively uh, charged pulse into the uh, water capacitor. And that actually is what accounts for that second pulse that we saw um, before, the inductive coupling um, diagram above. And the um, L2 um, does the same. It also collapses um, and heads over to um, the negative terminal of the, of the secondary. Um, but, but, but also very interestingly, as I was just approaching above, um, the secondary, the induced charge from the secondary coil moves towards the switching diode and actually passes through the switching diode and energizes L1, but, but in the opposite way. And that opposite charge, so in that, you know, again, that's a positive charge moving towards the capacitor. So all that, because it's positive charge, all that energy is facil you know, helping to facilitate holding the charge on the water capacitor. But you've got all this, this confluence of uh, this convergence of um, you know positively charged energy all moving in the same w way towards the capacitor. And you've also got this induction happening between L1 and the secondary that um, that that also contributes. Um, a actually, it's worth noting that that the um, the back EMF does pose uh, it, it is is opposed by slightly because it's a very slight induction, but is opposed slightly by the secondary at this phase. But the, but the back EMF amplitudes are high enough to kind of pass through it and to continue and to kind of kind of continue around towards the switching diode. So so uh, so what's just happened here is that while the while T two um, has occurred while the pulse is turned off, you've got all this activity um, with all this charge, all these pulses of charge moving towards that that positive side of, of the wa water capacitor plate, and all of that promotes the holding of the charge. Um, in the in the water um, in the water capacitor, so you know it makes it harder for it to discharge because it's got all this um, you know, positive energy still mounting on the plate during the pulse off time. It's as if a whole other uh, energization cycle has happened, um, even though we're not actively applying uh, energy to the primary. So that's that's a pretty interesting um, aspect of the VIG. Um, so let's see. So the next thing now, as we as as we end the VO to VA um, phase, that is, we've gotten to this, this VA voltage level. We had a few pulses in so doing. We now, this is where the, the, um, some really interesting things start to happen. Um, we, as, we, as we pulse from VA to VB, um, and, and, we, and we have that in, the impedance match situation and the, and the resonance situation, um, and that's happened because we've had a few pulses to kind of fine tune the circuit uh, in terms of the pulse frequency. Um, and, and and so now we get this uh, yeah this this equation this equation that we meant that we referenced earlier that that leads us to that amp inhibiting condition and so this amp inhibiting condition is all tied into um, this electron bounce phenomena that that Myers talked about and um, the electron bounce phenomena is when as a function of the flux flowing through this circuit. Um, because it's all because it's all you know it's all coupled together. It's all kind of one motion of flux. Now, when every time the primary in L two is is energized, you know um, the the secondary in L in L one uh, they they all they all have they all feel that and they feel it in the wire that composes them. Like they feel it all the way down the wire. And in this condition, so in the wire is made up of a, a material lattice of copper atoms. And the copper and the copper atoms, when subjected to this very high, you know, this high voltage and, and high flux field situation, is subject to those forces. And so, being subject to those forces, 
the um, electron bounce phenomena results, and that is, and it's, and it's specifically important in within L2, um, because in within L2, uh, it acts as a kind of, I think of it as a kind of valve. So what's happening is the copper atoms, um, they, the electrons that are associated with the copper atoms in that material lattice begin to pull, they, they begin to be pulled away from, from um, the copper because again of these, these extremely high forces and also because of the um, the, 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 the resonant condition and, and this impedance match condition, it's optimal to allow, um, it, the, the, these atoms have more leeway they have, because they have, less for, uh, they have less resistance posed against them in, this, in, the, in the condition that the big is in when it's at resonance and when it's impedance match. And so now this flux is able to act on them and pull the electrons away from the copper atoms. And, and so now um, the copper atoms, uh, or the, the electrons, um, begin to move away from the copper atoms. The copper, the copper atoms become copper ions, become sort of positively charged because they're losing electrons, and the electrons um, begin to cluster, as as Meyer called it. Um, and so these electrons now move towards the um, uh, the what was the positive terminal of the. In, this is inside of L2. Move towards the positive terminal um, of of L2. So that's down towards the. Um, Towards the you know towards the water capacitor and the uh, copper the positive copper ions move towards uh, the other terminal, uh, which was was the negative terminal. Now it and that changes its polarity. Now now the, what was the negative terminal of L2 becomes positive. And so what's happened is um, we've got we've got a, a negative terminal facing the negative terminal of the capacitor. Negative terminal of L2 now negative because of the electron bounce effect uh, or phenomena is now we've got it. So we've got these two negative. So now every time the uh, the primary is pulsed. L2 is a charge is induced, but because because during um, during T1 L2 is uh, is has a reverse polarity, the induced charge moves the other direction, and so we're actually moving charge. Uh, we're not driving charge any longer into the um, into the cathode of the water uh, capacitor, um, but we're now you know we're now sending it in an entirely different direction, and so this creates. Uh, an entirely new op op mode of operation in the circuit, and we're still we're still working to to fully unravel how this works. I, we have some drafts um, ready, which we're going to post shortly after posting this video. But um, but it's very it's very interesting because now every pulse from VB through VN um, uh, serves to just completely uh, you know it's completely applied to that positive plate, um, and then the the collapses that occur. Are also uh, work, work to hold charge onto that positive plate, and now we're never sending charge, uh, you know, to the to the cathode of the plate. So we've just got this extreme situation on the capacitor now. Um, so that's that's um, that's the really interesting thing about the Vic: this kind of change of mode of operation, as Meyer called it, and and this electron bounce phenomena, which he talks about in his various documents, but he never goes too deeply into it. Um, you almost get the sense by reading it that, you know. It's, you, you don't really fully grasp how important it is to the operation of the VIC, just by the way he, he sort of understates it. Um, so uh, this next drawing that, that, that's here, it just shows um, the VIC matrix circuit when in, in, terms of how, in terms of the different impedances and, and resistances. This was um, a drawing from, um, from memo uh, 425. Uh, and it's it's pretty important in terms of understanding the impedance matching aspect of the circuit. But I grouped the two of the coils here just to help further drive home the point that you know the primary coil and um, uh, the primary coil is is grouped with um, um, L two. Oh, sorry, L two. Thanks, Russ. And the secondary is uh, yeah. So this gives you the grouping: L one in the secondary and primary in, in L two. Um, it's a, I don't know why. It, I still look at my laptop because I wrote it right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's important to note, too, about this particular drawing is uh, if you actually go reference each one of these items that he has listed here, you'll find out that he's talking about the magnetic flux and he's talking about the mutual inductance and he's talking about all of these principles are actually in this particular drawing, but they're drawn as components. So they're drawn as resistors, but really he's talking about the resistance of the opposing magnetic flux while the circuit's functioning in like uh, T2 mode. So it's, yeah. it's very interesting 
that this drawing looks like a standard schematic drawing, but is actually a representation of flux, mechanical layout, and electrical properties of the coils. So it's, it's, an, it's a very important drawing, actually. It really is. And yeah, it, exactly to your point, Russ, you know, this RP1 and RP2 and RP in particular, so it's actually, there's actually a blue line running through. Um, uh, if you look at the, the transformer primary L2, you'll see there that in the core, there's, and there's a blue line running through right through it. I should probably move that. It says RP. Well, that refers to um, the reactance of the, of the, in, of the coil, uh, of that transformer, the reactance of the inductance coupling. And because they all share a core, RP1 and RP2 um, have a reactance that results exactly from that pulse because they all because they all share a core. And reactance is very much like resistance, which is why it is why, which is why we use the ohm, you know, the unit ohms to describe it. Except that it doesn't, you know, no heat is dissipated from it, so it's not it's not resistance. It's just but it's like a resistance because it opposes it, it, because it opposes current. Um, anyhow. Uh, and, and then similarly to Russ's point um, about how important this drawing is in terms of representing all of the all the elements of the equations um, that, that that are necessary to to dial this thing into the impedance match slash resonant condition, um, that there is also represented the mutual inductance of um, uh, or the um, the internal inductance rather of the core of these coils. So you see um, that the secondary and L two have the CD one and CD two respectively. These are the internal capacitances of these of these quote chokes, these resonant charging chokes, and and at this point where um, all the reactances re reactances drop away, those voltages that are stored become a coherent use, you know, unified sum voltage, and those voltages are applied to the capacitor. So you get so it's another source of, of voltage intensification, just that fact alone. So that's another thing that's you know sort of hinted at in this document, um, but. Um, and that is very important uh, in, the, in, the, in the operation of the VIC. Indeed. So um, let's see. So the next thing that we touch on in this post is uh, the, the, the parameters of the equation. So we, we kind of describe a lot of what we were just talking about. And one thing, to, one thing here to maybe talk a little more, a little more about is RE, which is the resistance of the water. Um, so the resistance of the water is is going to be the, the amount of resistance between the, you know, that the water poses electric current in between. Um, however, uh, Myers often talked about the um, dielectric constant of water, which is a value that's necessary for computing the capacitance of the capa you know of the capacitor of the water capacitor. But he, he, he but he talked about this value, which is 78 point uh, ohms. He, he referred to this value in ohms. Now there could be a a reason that he did this. There could be a you know he, maybe he's he was he had a, a, a unique understanding and he was talking about it in this way because he was trying to, to teach us something perhaps that's the case but I, I at this point I I believe that he was just creating he, in his mind he was creating a, a, syn, a synonym sort of between the the, word, the term dielectric which is the property of a material to store charge when in a capacitive situation and um, and ohmic resistance, which is simply the amount of uh, the degree to which a charge flow is opposed because of the nature of the material lattice, um, and and so these are two different values. And where where the um, dielectric constant is unitless and dimensionless, and it refers to um, the, you know something very specific at the atomic level, um, and, and where ohmic resistance is is a, is a, a, a entirely different kind of measurement, and I think that he just, I think I I believe at this time, and I could be wrong, because I know there's other people who have other views on this, but I believe that he was just creating in his mind a, syn a synonym between black, the dielectric constant and the the notion the notion of ohmic resistance, and and so he decided to apply the uh, the, the omega symbol the, the the symbol for the ohm uh, to to it, and and, and that, so that's, that's that's what I, I believe was happening there. But in any case, whatever, I, I, I have that as a footnote because uh, I think it's important. It's kind of con a confusing point. Um, and, but, but regardless of what, what we think, it's, it is the case that water, when you measure the resistance across the plates, are very rarely going to be 78 point, whatever that value is, whatever the dielectric constant is, very rarely going to be that. Um, it's, it's usually going to be much higher unless your water is highly 
um, contaminated, you know, or, or has lots of electrolytes in it. Uh, but but pure water is going to be, you know, you know, millions potentially, millions of um, of ohms. Um, and and dialing into the when when Myers talks about dialing into the uh, resonant, I'm sorry, to dielectric, the dielectric properties. properties of water, <laughs> he's talking about um, he's talking about adjusting the frequency so that to, to account for the variation that water will present in resistance um, and, and which you can do simply by you know adjusting the, the simply by adjusting frequency because and that's because this question of impedance matching is all uh, res, it, you know if you look at curves for these components of, of reactants um, if, you, you know, if you look at the plot for every component there's this curve at which you know the plot moves the the, the the resistance moves sort of up it hits this peak at resonance and then moves down the other direction so when you're changing the frequency that's what you're doing you're, you're, you're scan you're scanning up to that point and um, so anyhow long story short um, that's this this business of the dielectric um, you know property of water uh, and the notion of, of resistance and, and dialing into it through through the changing of frequency that's really really key to, to you know to the goal to, to the goal here and uh, so I just wanted to spend a moment talking about that definitely um, we already kind of talked a bit about the electron bounce phenomena, but you can you can dig in here. There's a there's a drawing of Myers uh, included here, which is for the longest time before I really put my head into the electron bounce phenomena, I wasn't even sure what this drawing was. But after you understand what Myers is talking about, you see that the electrons are moving towards you know towards the bottom of the wire. That 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 cylinder that he's drawn is actually the the magnet wire on this on the L2 side, and um, and so you see the electrons moving down. So they're changing the, the, the polarity of that of that terminal that faces the capacitor, and the copper ions are moving up, changing the polarity of the terminal um, that faces um, you know the other side of the of the circuit. Um, yeah. So moving. So that's so that's really where we are right now. Um, we're as we speak, we're we're busy creating another series of illustrations that that fully characterizes the path of charge around this around the vic when the vic is. Um, energized in this um, in this other mode of operation, um, and there's some kind of you know there's there's some things to work out. It's um, uh, so we should have that done soon. Uh, we're still we're still on the bench, like trying 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 to work it out. But uh, one thing I will say is that while we are seeing some um, you know in our tests we're seeing some gas production, light gas production, uh, because we have we are applying pretty high voltages. Um, Forward, mostly forward EMF, but but of course the back EMF is is a, a factor, just as described, because every time the, the things collapse, you know. So, but it's not like before. I used to talk a lot about uh, in my sim simple circuit posted a couple years ago. I was getting a, I was getting gas production through um, through the back spikes alone, and so I was exploring that, and that I think that was a good result. But it, it's not it's not Myers' result, and so now we're we're starting to see some gas production with exactly Myers, uh, you know description of how things should work but it's very light um, and so we still have we still have uh, some ways to go here no question about it uh, and lots to learn and we want to learn from you guys so you know whatever you um, whatever you see you know maybe we've got something wrong we're not thinking about something the way you're thinking about it we believe that they, that, that this is as Meyer said the only way that this technology is going to come in is when you know me you and the guy down the street <laughs> uh, make it happen so that's really what it's we're not doing here it's not you nor I. It's not the guy down the street. It's all of us. All right. Oh, well, just that, um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> so, you... <laughs> yeah, just, just in general, yeah, this is the, um, if, so if you guys, uh, you know, as you're looking at this blog post and, and watching this video and, you know, you, you imagine, oh, this seems to me to be wrong or this seems to me to be right or what have you, just anything that, that you're thinking, please just share it with, you know, with, um, with Russ and I at, at Russ's forum. He, Russ, as you guys probably know, have, has this incredible forum that he's created and a lot of engineers, open source engineers, and, and also just enthusiasts and hobbyists, whomever, all just participating and talking. It's a really great forum. 
Um, so you know, go there and share your, your thoughts. We're, we'll, we'll read every one of the thoughts, incorporate it, think it through, respond. Um, and, and that's really what we're trying to encourage here. Uh, it's, like, it's like Stan Meyer said a long time ago, you know, before he died, he said, this is not going to be Stan Meyer's to bring it in. He had, he had already realized sort of the opposition that, he, that I think that, that, he, that he faced um, mm-hmm. trying, to, trying, trying to make this happen as, a, as an inventor trying to start a business. Uh, and he was pretty firm, steadfast on that. He really was trying to make this happen. He wanted to own the patents and all that. It didn't work out. Um, so as he said in his own words in his Denver, Colorado uh, lecture, this is not going to be Stan Meyer to bring it in. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to be me, you. It's going to be, it's going to be a collection of everybody. He's, yeah, I'm paraphrasing. But, but I think that's the key. I think that's really right. So yep. I just want to encourage anybody. You know, look, what, what we've done here is just the best that Russ and I can do. And uh, mm-hmm. ho- hopefully it's pretty close. Um, but we don't know everything. So we want to encourage everybody to, uh, to you know, as you read through this critically, um, let us know your feedback. Because um, it's going to take it's going to take the whole community to get, to make this work. I, I feel feel kind of confident about it at this point. It's, it's one man. It took Stan worked on this for 20 years, <laughs> and he got it to an incredible point. But then it went, you know. But then it just all disappeared. So yeah, exactly. If, yeah. So if you believe like Russ and I do that he wasn't just a madman toiling at, at insanity for all that time, um, which which really seems unlikely based on just the sheer volume of work and just based on so many things. You know, I think that the, that this technology has true potential, that it has legs, and that it's something you know worth applying our time and effort to. So, yep. so those, are, those are some of my thoughts, closing thoughts. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, and everything me and you have been doing and will continue doing is completely open source because we already realize that you know, you, and you can see that Stan realized that it, it it has to start from a grassroots movement. It has to come in through the ground, through the people. You're not going to have just some corporation selling stuff making this this happen because if you do well then you're just you're back to square one it's all about money and so forth and so on i don't need to go into that but it, yeah. it's a, it's a problem so if we all can understand it on our own levels and make it work then we will bring it in as a group um and that's ultimately the goal is to share to share this knowledge with people that's the reason that we created this post this video and uh looking forward to your feedback so awesome sauce <laughs> yes, generous helpings of awesome sauce. <laughs> awesome sauce is free for the taking. Come and get it. Okay, well, um, that's Russ and Alex and Petty. I'm Alex, yes, thanks so, very much, everybody. So, and I hope you enjoyed and uh, leave us some feedback. All right, peace and love. God bless you guys. <laughs>